Yes, sir. All right, guys. So today we're just going to go ahead and look at some charts, look at what happened this past week, and just get better overall. Um, I see the first. It's me. My bad. Uh, let's see. London, EUR, NZD. Does that mean Sydney? EUR, NZD. Awesome. So let's take a look. I'm not sure what um happened with news um regarding EUR NZD. I don't really trade this pair a whole lot. Um, but it looks like it's just consolidating in this area. It looks like this was consolidating over the week, if I'm not mistaken. What, what was the start of the week? What was the date to start the week? Uh the ninth. Let's go ahead and look. Yeah, so it's been consolidating this whole week for EUR NZD. So nothing too special going on right there. So let's go ahead and do top-down analysis with EUR NZD. Take a look at this real quick. Look like it looks like it's starting to get some uh, upward upward momentum in this area. But let's let's take a look and ask ourselves why we're getting some upward momentum in this area, right? When we take a look at EUR NZD and take a look at this structure, I mean the one thing that sticks out to me is this right here right that right there let's zoom out a little bit take a look all right so there's two things that we can use as a shoulder i'm i'm seeing a, a break of structure to the upside here it's well, funny. I'm up um, so, or I'm tomorrow so that i leave at three my boy left at three i hope he was on time it's all about being on time baby all right, so I'm seeing these two break of structures to the upside, and then I am seeing um, a change of character to the downside right here. And after that, we're mainly just staying in this range and ranging slightly upward. You know, we are continuing to go in a slightly upward momentum. Nothing too crazy, but we are starting to go with some trend line trade, you know, uptrend type market structure. Um, now, with that being said, I wish I can go in a higher time frame um, on NZD. On on levels, I like to go on diff different time frames when it comes to the month, um, like the two month, three month, four month. It gives me a different outlook. Um, got that from Will, and I got that from Neri as well. Um, when it comes to changing time frames, I like to look at the time frames to make things a lot more clear to myself, right? So, take that with a grain of salt. You guys should check that out. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick. Looks like this is already taken in this area. There was a slight break of structure. So this was the starting point in that area. And it looks like it's holding it down right there for, for a minute. So now we can start expecting a little higher. So the higher zones would, would be right over here, which is the first shoulder we can see if we can get a reaction off of. And that's still a good ways up. So we, we can stop right there uh, for now, looking for sales or looking for sell type projections. Now for the bullish... This is what I'm seeing right here. So we do see consolidation in this range, right? We have a liquidity sweep to the downside that came right into this starting point. That was fire. And then we get a pretty nice rejection to the upside, right? We do get a change of character. So we were looking for either a starting point move here. We do have a starting point here, right? Or we could be looking at the left shoulder. Now it looks like the market decided to stick with the starting point, which is fine, right? It is what it is. But as you can see, market is respecting at the moment and it's continuing to go higher. Now we have the same thing over again where we are breaking structure to the upside. Breaking structure to the upside, giving me a break, uh, a BOS, giving me a brand new starting point, which is right here, right? And now if we drop down to the weekly time frame. You can see, already see, guys, we're on the monthly time frame. So everything inside of here on this time frame looks like consolidation. Would you guys agree? Let me know. Yes. Right? So on this time yes. frame, don't get me wrong. This is the monthly time frame. So through here, you know, down to here, there's still a couple pips, probably a couple hundred if, if we want to go ahead and mess around. Right? This is already a thousand pips on the monthly time frame. 
right? So just because it's consolidation doesn't mean you can't indulge on the higher time frame. Anything four hour down, guys, I would not, I personally would not indulge. One hour down would not indulge in consolidation. But if your pair is EUR NZD, of course you're going to go ahead and indulge, right? If we drop down to the one hour time frame, we can see we have a whole lot of structure between those ranges. Does that make sense, guys? So if you're on the one hour time frame or you're looking for some trades four hour, anything within that zone on that monthly time frame consolidation, you're going to be able to catch some plays for sure, right? But the smaller the time frame, the tighter the consolidation, you're not going to really want to play within those zones, you know, 100%. So now that we understand that that's been arranging right there for a while, let's actually take a look. That's been from about the middle of 2000, the middle of 2023 um, till now. So, you know, pretty much a, a full year. Now let's drop down to a lower time frame real quick and we'll start to dissect. This is a pretty good rejection right here, right? So check me out. I can see why it rejected so cleanly. We do have, well, that's a freaking big fly. We have a, a break of structure to the downside right here. And then we immediately change character, right? Leaving us a starting point in this area. So notice how we have a, a giant breakout rally, right? That's pretty big. That's, that's pretty, pretty clean to see. Now we have a nice starting point right here. This big ass red candle right there. That's our starting point, guys. And then we have the left shoulder, which is this previous break of structure. So that was cool. A little double confirmation right there. Solid. All right. Now let's jump on lower time frame. Let's go to the daily. Cool. Now on the daily time frame, um, this is a pretty clean, a pretty clean structure as well. Um, let's see. Let's take a look right here. So even right here, guys, we can see we had a daily starting point levels is letting us know hey we have a starting point right here we can take a look at right we already know this whole th pretty much this whole range is a daily starting point but if we want to narrow it down we know we have a starting point here on the on the daily and we also have a shoulder way down here on the daily as well same thing we're just tightening up a little bit does that make sense guys let me know let me know so we can see the starting yes. point was, was again awesome we can see again yes. the starting point was thank you was the 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 one it wanted to reject off of right now on the daily time frame we can see our closest pullback right this is our 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 point of interest our closest pullback would be right here drop down pull back drop down so in order to change character and continue buying we would need to break and close above this high right there so we can go ahead and continue right so let's go ahead and mark that up Boom. So we can see we're getting some, some rejection. Now, not only that, guys, that's also a starting point, right? Notice how we have a breakout rally to the downside, right? Breakout rally to the downside, giving me a last buying candle. That's my starting point. So no wonder why we are having a tough time breaking above. It's a starting point. So right now, it's just best to stay patient. If you didn't get in down here or maybe in continuations along this area, it's best just to stay patient and wait for that breakout so we can go ahead and start looking for continuations. Make sense, guys? Let me know. Now, let's yes, yes, down. yes, yes. Awesome. Yes. Drop down. Let's see if we could have taken... Now we're, now we're already understanding to where we are in the market, right? We had just said this was the full week. Now, in Euro NZD was pretty much consolidating all week, uh, which is fine, right? Now, why is it consolidating right here? And if it's going to push higher, right, what do you guys want to see? You guys have to start thinking like this. If we want to push higher and the market is consolidating, what do we want to see, guys? Right? Now, let's just take a look at the chart. What is the chart telling you, fam? Right? We can see we have consolidation. We can see we have consolidation in this area. Right? Market's been doing its thing. Now, guys, what do we see right below that? Do we have a break of structure right here? Yes. 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 Now, check me out. Levels is letting me know. Boom. We have a starting point here. Right? We have a starting point here. 
Now we had one here. Now, if you've been on with Oren, you know when we have two back to back just like this, the first one, right? Or I guess the second one. Well, the one that's closest to price, right? If this was life price, the one that's closest to it, there's gonna be a time where that's gonna be a consolidation starting point, right? And the one below that, that's gonna be the one you want. So just keep that in mind, guys. Right. So when you see that with levels, we're like, oh, we have one right here and then one down here. We want to pay attention to the lower one. Right. Now we can see we have a starting point down here. We'll just go ahead and mark that up. Now, if we really want to go ahead and dissect the structure, which we should always want to. Right. Let's go ahead and pull this away and go. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's zoom in a little bit more, guys. Right. Because the structure will tell you everything you need to see. You just have to want to see it. Right, guys, what would what would you consider this right here? Consolidation, liquidity being built up. Now look at what happened, guys. Did we get a peak breaking through the bottom? Little peak, consolidation, boom. Yes. Little breakthrough. This was that liquidity suite. This yes. is the head right here in this section. This is the head. We changed character. So not only do we have the starting point that's right here, we also have a head and shoulder that's right here, inverted. So if it goes even lower, that's better for us, right? Better risk to award, because we know our stop loss should be at the bottom anyways. Make sense, guys? Stop loss should be down here. Yes. So yes. if the market wants to continue, that's fine, right? We this This starting point has already been working. We have one rejection. <laughs> Oops. We've had um, two rejections. Thank you, Solomon. Thank you, Solomon. Three rejection. We've had four rejection. Right. So this starting point has been holding up. I mean, we can still possibly get one more rejection to the downside to come pick this up. Right. So let's go ahead and just clear this stuff up real quick. We know we have consolidation in here. Now, what if the market can go ahead, give us another rejection, right? Come pick us up, and then we can look for buys in this area so we can go ahead and continue. Do you guys see a possibility? Do you guys have to start thinking ahead, right? When you guys see things like this, what are you guys looking for? What do you guys want to happen? If you're looking for NZ, your NZD to get start getting bullish, right? This is playing out structure wise exactly how we would want it to be. Does that make sense, guys? It's literally playing out, right? So once we got that consolidation or uh, the change of character, shoulder, head, change of character, it's consolidating for us one more time. Hopefully, we can get that nice push. We can look for some buy opportunities here and then continue with that bullish momentum. Does that make sense, Josue? I know this was your pair. I think you called this one out. Yes. Yeah, 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 bro. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, sir. Awesome. So, yeah, this is something that could be uh, happening sometime next week. I mean, we just have to stay patient. I mean, it's doing nothing but consolidating right now. Nothing too crazy. Am, am I, I mean, that literally looks like consolidation. So, I know you can see plays. Like, I understand. I can see plays in here, too. Right, break the structure, change of character, right shoulder sell. I can see all this stuff too, guys. Trust me. I see the one over here too. Right? I see this. But at the end of the day, it's still consolidation. So you have to choose. Are you willing to risk your own money inside of this consolidation? Or are you gonna wait for something that's something that's more higher probability? Because look, at the end of the day, even though we got these, they all hit break even. Break even. You get in right here, you got in break even again. Got in, break even. It's just consolidating, guys. Literally, it's all it doing. That's all it's doing. And we have to start maturing as traders. Like I know we can see what's in here, right? And trust me, they want you to see it. They will make structure a lot more clear inside consolidation especially when it's something this big because they know you're looking at the charts like this, right? So when you zoom out, you're like, okay, well, I see consolidation. What could be happening? Four-hour time frame. 
We do the top down. We see we got rejection from here. Possible uh, buys uh, can be coming in, in the future, right? We have to start thinking ahead. Mm -hmm. um, let's take a look real quick, the daily. What's up, Anthony? What's good, bro? Let's go up one more. Oops. I mean, that's mainly that's all we're dealing with right now so far, guys. I mean, we can't even push too much, right? Because we haven't got it yet. The next starting point right now would be right here, but we're not there yet. Right? We're not there yet. So, this is all we got right now for your NZD. So, stay patient. That's all we got. Um, let's see what do we have. I think the next one after that was USD CAD. Let's go to USD CAD. And USD CAD gave a solid move right here. If anybody was down to take that, that was pretty solid. Um, but yeah, let's go back. Let's go take a look at USD CAD. Um, so Wednesday, was the 11th? So the 11th, the 11th, the 11th. What are we going to one hour? Let's go to one hour. 11th. Okay. So this was the new spike for Wednesday right here in this area. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this right here and put an arrow. I'll go ahead and put an arrow. This was news for Wednesday and then for Thursday. Um, Let's see, Thursday. This was news for Thursday right here. Boom, six in the morning. Right? Six in the morning. So then now that we know that, let's go ahead and dissect that real quick. What were we looking at for USD CAD? Right now, I was looking for sales in this area. Let's go to the four hour time frame real quick. USD CAD has been pretty bearish. Uh, let's actually go a little higher. Right, USD CAD. Oh my goodness. Hey yo. That's a blown account right there. <laughs> that's a that's a for sure blown account right there. Um uh, that was crazy, my boy. All right. So not that high. My bad. Weekly. So the weekly has given us some bearish signs, right? We were consolidating in this area for a while, right? Chilling back and forth, chilling back and forth, consolidating. We get a nice spike up, and then we actually change character. So now that we have that, mainly I'm just looking for sales, right? We have the break of structure. We have the change of character. So knowing that, we do have a weekly shoulder up here. I know we do have some like four-hour shoulders up here in this area, but we'll go to that in a, in a little bit. Now, look at this right here. We have, let's see, let's move this down to the wicks, right? Because those wicks matter in this area. We don't get the break of structure out of that till right here. So notice how we get a rejection. These candles go through that line, but we never break and close. We stay above. Now, this red candle finally breaks through. So my starting point, and that area is right here, that last green candle. So I'm going to go ahead and extend. That's my starting point. Now, check me out. Even on the daily, yes, we might have hit stop loss if you were test trading, but we never break and close above. The starting point never violates. So we can still look for some sell opportunities. Let's go to the four-hour time frame. Our stop losses, or I'm sorry, our, our st starting point is a bit higher. So now we can look at something like that. And obviously still, yes, the stop loss was hit. 
um, but it doesn't violate and we could still continue to look for some cells. Now let's go ahead and drop down. Now we can see here, look at what it was, guys. News. You were already in profit. You were literally in profit and look what it gave you. It gave you the setup all over again. Consolidation. The liquidity sweep. What happened? Change of character. So guys, you were already in this. Right, you should have, maybe you're in this on a test trade, right? Who knows? In this area, just off the first touch, right? Market comes in, test trade first touch. Now what we're waiting for is this head and shoulder to appear, so we can go ahead and enter on a higher lot when it comes back. Boom. Now, trust me, the banks know we want to go ahead and enter south here. And what happens, guys? The banks came right to our setup, and they gave us that stop loss. But look. We've talked about this like three calls ago, right? If this is my if this is my stop loss right here, right? That's my stop loss. Look, news came in. Yes, and it happens. It is what it is. We got to take that loss like a boss, even though that was a one percenter. It is what it is, right? Like, trust me, I took that loss there too. With, I mean, if you guys were looking at USD CAD, I took that loss there too. But I showed you guys two, three weeks ago. When the candle hits your stop loss, what do we have to do? Drop down. Well, there's one more thing we have to wait before that. Wait for it to close? We have to wait for that candle to close. Good, Good job. job, whoever said that. That's We have to wait, right? Because at, at one point, this candle right here that hit our stop loss was completely green, right? Look, it's look like something like this. Go ahead and boom. Looking like that. Crazy. And then what happens? They start to shrink, 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 and then boom, they close. Right below your stop loss. So if the market closed above, hey, it is what it is. We're no longer looking for sales. We got to be looking for buys. But since it came below the stop loss, we could still look for sales. So there's three things we could have we could be doing, right? Does anybody remember the first one? Right? There were three types of trades I told you we could be taking after we got stop lost. Does anybody remember? Was it aggressive? It was aggressive. Next trade, maybe and it was aggressive. After... Drop down to look for the setup. Or we can wait for the setup to happen on the same time frame. Okay. So, so the aggressive trade, the market closed right here. You can go ahead and enter in again right here. This is what I did. And your stop loss is at this new wick. And then you're looking for your one to three. Right? That's the aggressive trade right there. You wait for that candle to close within your zone. You enter as soon as it closes and you put your stop loss at that new wick right there. Make sense, guys? Yeah. Awesome. Now, yes. Option two, let's go down to a lower time frame. Um, because I, I didn't do that. I was already at work at that time. So I wasn't even trying to drop down and pay attention to the phone and cut hair and all that good stuff. I was already busy. So once I'm busy, I'm just setting and forgetting, right? Now, let's drop down to the five. It doesn't look like it gives us an entry on the five. It is what it is, right? Let's go ahead and zoom in. <clears throat> this is the setup right here on the five-minute time frame because we're trying to catch it when it stops. Oops. Once it breaks and closes, right? So we can see we have higher high, higher low, higher high. We change character. We never get a break and retest or a shoulder to sell off. But I did see that it came back this way. So let's see what happens. I'm also seeing this as well. So if you're on a higher time frame, like the 15, most likely, this isn't here. Let's go up real quick. Okay, we still have this up here. And then we have this right here, which is a lot more defined. So on the, let's see, on the 30 minute or the one hour, let's see if it gives that to us. 30 minute, one hour definitely doesn't. Yeah, definitely doesn't. 
So if you're looking on the 30 minute, which I know a lot of you guys do, maybe you caught that one, right? Maybe you caught it. Maybe you did it on the five minute. It didn't look like it gave it to us. Let's drop down to the one minute. It's going the wrong way. Where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? It's way this way, right? It has to be. And this computer works fast. Oh, this one? Yeah, I know. I never use it. I don't want my mouse to. It feels weird. Um, If you're looking for that one minute trade, it does give you a break and retest. I know people aren't fond of break and retests, but that shit works, especially on the one minute. Like, you're on the one minute, guys. You know, it's okay to risk a little bit more pips. We have that change of character right here. Break and retest. That was the only entry you could have gotten on that one minute so far. Shoulder, um, neckline, the head, breakout, retest, drop. And it actually broke, it retested the starting point. It's letting you know right here, actually. So let's go ahead and, and delete this. So that was actually your first opportunity, right? Anytime we get a head and shoulder, there's two opportunities. There's the starting point and the shoulder. So we know that this is the shoulder here. We could have been looking for sales if the market went a bit higher. So let's go ahead and extend right, right shoulder. Now my starting point, the market is saying, hey, we got to break and close right here. So my starting point is actually this last buying candle right here. So if you were looking at the one minute, you possibly could have gotten into that starting point sale. And your stop loss, if you're looking, I mean, you can do it super tight if you want to like that. But on the one minute, guys, I mean, you're all, that's only seven pips. That's not 72 pips. That's only seven pips, right? So, hey, it may look like a lot when you're zoomed in like this. But when we're looking at the one minute and still using higher time frame targets, it, it's still going to look pretty good, right? Still going to look pretty good. One to three risk to award, smacking, smacking. Even if you're trying to attack these lows right here. You hit TP, that's a one to 5.5, right? So starting point, that was pretty valid in my opinion. On the one minute, that's clean. Starting point, let's go ahead and break that down one more time because I feel like a lot of people don't get that. I feel like you guys want the starting point to overlap the shoulder most of the time. And it's not always going to give that to you. You know, we have to look at the opportunities as they come. So we can see, let's go ahead and delete this real quick just for the clarity, right? And again, this is what I like to call price action, guys, off of a zone, right? I'm looking for the same thing over and over again, over and over again. So even though, yes, maybe I hit a, a stop loss, right? I'm, I'm literally seeing the same thing happen. I get a higher high, a higher low, higher high. Okay, now the market is starting to come my way. Opportunity one, boom. Opportunity two, if it wants to go higher, boom, let's send it down. But it looks like it only took opportunity one and it was out of there. It was ready to go. Once the banks came in and said, we're stopping loss, or we're going to hit stop loss for everybody, it was gone. It took off. Hit stop loss for everybody and it and immediately redirected, right? But again, we're still stuck in this area. We haven't really done much. You know, so, um, and now that we have that, let's drop down one more time. Honestly, I still kind of like this area because it's still consolidating. Let me go ahead and delete that. I still kind of like this area. And I like the risk to award on it too. Because we have consolidation and a lot of it right here. I'm going to go ahead and widen that now that I know I have a little wider zone. Boom. I, I still can possibly catch an opportunity in this area right here. We have a lot of liquidity being built up. And we still have a free right shoulder, right? So, and it's pretty decent risk to award, especially if we're going to send it back down the way market wants to go. Again, if we go back to that four-hour time frame, market is very bearish. And we do have liquidity chilling right here. So... If the market what did want to do that, if it does want to do this, that would be a one to 17 on that five minute setup, right? Obviously we would be partialing throughout the drop, but 
if market wants to continue, right? Lower low, lower high. If market wants to continue, it would go create a new lower low. Does that make sense, guys? Let me yeah. know. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Because that, that's that's what I'm eyeballing right now. That's still looking pretty good. Um, especially with Forex pairs, guys. It's just about patient, being patient, you know? And then we go back to that one hour time frame. We do have that change of character also, right? And it looks a little funky, right? It does, it does look a little funky, but notice we do have that liquidity sweep that was right here, right? My old setup, right? My old sell setup. This is now my shoulder. This is opportunity three now, right? I just aggressive. We just broke down the aggressive. I just went down to a lower time frame and broke down the five minute and the one minute. Now this is my option three. Wait for the next setup on that same time frame. Liquidity sweep, change of character, consolidation. So now what we're waiting for is market to come back up, give me that sell opportunity and send it back down. So now it literally is everything falling into place right here. It's so funny when a shoulder overlaps a shoulder in a lower time frame, it's just, it's great. So now this is something that I would be looking at. And obviously my first target points would be in, in here somewhere. I, um, take partial one, take partial two. And then we'll continue as we continue to drop. But this is something that I'm looking at um, for next week. We'll see if we can get something going. Um, so, yeah. Take a look at that, guys. Hey, would you, if it breaks the, the next line, would you take it off the one right there where you cross the floor? Would you take it off the left shoulder or no? If it breaks and closes below here? Take. Would you take it off the shoulder or no? Yeah, I would take. I would see if we if everything lined up. So BJ was letting me know. I love that. All right. Well, he was asking if we break and close below here, right? If we break and close, we would have left shoulder, head, break and close. Can we use this zone as a shoulder? And we can. But I also like to line up the market structure on this right hand side to see if we can have some type of. Um, starting point like let's say market gives me a nice push up gives it gives me this we reject off this zone right get a little starting point in this area we break through and now everything lines up through and through and we can go ahead and send it back down does that make sense that's what i like to do i like to line up the right side with the left side and then i, I mean it, the thing is guys when you know what you're looking at Everything's gonna line up regardless, right? Especially like, look at he's he's talking about selling the head and the shoulder, right? Sells, boom, sells. But I'm also seeing a, a an head and shoulder violation if that happens. We have a, a shoulder right here, right? Shoulder, head. Now, if we violate, that's a violation. I'm waiting for the market to come back. Give me a starting point. Give me the violation. Give me that right shoulder, and then we can send it back down. What's up? What's up? Right. So everything lines up when you guys take the time to look at it and dissect the market structure. When you think a couple of steps ahead and you look at the structure, everything is going to line up. Right. So that's that's solid. Right now, it's just a waiting game. We'll just see what happens um, when it comes to, you know, next week. I'm going to be patient with this. Um, I, I'm going to be patient with this. Let's take a look at that four hour real quick. Go to daily. I think that's the daily and everything else pushing. Yeah, I want to. I want to take a look at this because we can possibly, if the market's really bearish with USD CAD the way it is, we can still get another push down, a nice rejection. So I want to see what's good um next week with that for sure. Uh, let's see. USD JPY. Okay, Linda, I see you. Let's go to USD JPY. Look at all the time we got, bro. See when we just start with charts, bro. We just have all the time in the world, bro. I love it. All right. So first of all, let's go to the monthly time frame real quick. So right now we're in a real subjective area with the yens. If you look at them, a lot of them have changed character on the weekly. And they look like it's very close to that monthly change of character. Right. We have a break of structure here. And then if market breaks and closes below, we're going to have a monthly change of character. 
and we are inside of a starting point as well. So we could have some problems, obviously the way it is, right? We can we can still continue higher. We still can, right? It's, we're barely in the middle of the month right now. It's only September 13th, right? So we still have time to consolidate for a little bit, make some, you know, consolidation, whatever, whatever, sweep liquidity and head up by the time the month ends, right? So it, we're still in possibility of buys. But if the market, if, when the month ends and we're down here, that's not a good sign for the yen, right? We can continue to look for sales. And when that happens, guys, when we have that change of character and you see this and the market is down here, guys, you have to recognize the face. Little Orin. Little Orin mode real quick. My left shoulder. Neckline. The head, change of character, we need that right shoulder. So we can go ahead and send that thing back down. Does that make sense, guys? Let me know. Yes. Awesome. So that's what I'm looking at with the yens. And all the yens are looking at uh, looking just like this, right? So whichever yen you like to look at, just wait for confirmation. Um, but now that we know that, so let's go ahead and drop to lower time frame. Again, this is a starting point. So I'm just going to highlight this and then fade that out a little bit pretty dark so now let's go to the weekly um i'm just gonna shrink this way down to here all right so now we can obviously see this this is pretty clean as well like this was just a na like nasty structure um for the yens this past month so we're way down here now so on the weekly time frame this is the setup we have a starting point in this area for sales. I'm just going to use this green candle. And then we have a shoulder. So now let's drop down the da uh, daily. So now we're getting closer. Live price is right here. So I missed this sell actually. And I, I had sent this in the chat and I was kind of butthurt because this was the one I was looking at the most. This was the one that looked the most clean. But if you look at all the dollars, this is the most clean pair out of all of them, and it ended up missing, so I was kind of hot because this is what I was focused on the most. So if if we look at this, I mean, that was the daily. I was actually looking up, up here, so I missed this by a lot, but still, I was I was pretty bummed, right? We have the breakage structure to the upside, and then we have that change of character. Boom. We're looking for sales in this area. It fails to come higher. It happens, right? But we continue to focus on structure. So just because we want it to come up here, it is what it is, right? But we continue to focus on the structure, break a structure, change a character. It was a break and retest, but it fails to come back to that right shoulder. Fails to come back. It is what it is. But it does give you a starting point. Again, find the breakout candle. The breakout happened here. Breakout rally. This last blind candle, that's my starting point. You can't see it on the four hour, but let's drop down the one hour. Let's see if it'll show you. Boom. Boom. Solid. Solid. Again, every head and shoulder has two opportunities. You have the right side, which is the starting point, and the left side, which is your left shoulder. Right? And there's going to be times where your starting point is the first opportunity. You know? Uh, just like we can see here. Starting point was the first opportunity. It ended up eating off the starting point. And it left the, sh the shoulder. You know, it is what it is. Can't really do nothing off of that. But if you didn't catch this move here, I mean, this move is actually off the starting point. So let me break that down to you real quick. We have the break of structure, and then we have a starting point right here. So if you didn't catch this move right here, which is definitely the move of that structure, or you didn't catch this one here. I mean, you, you kind of didn't catch any really good sell opportunities um, because after that, the market's starting to break down and move a lot slower. Um, there was one right here, but again, the market's starting to move slower and we're in a monthly starting point. So the lower we get into this zone, we can possibly get, I mean, hold on. I mean, the lower we go into this zone and still look for sales, we can possibly get smack, right? Because now the market can just reverse whenever, right? We have consolidation drop we can reverse now 
chooses to respect, now we can reverse here, right? We we don't really know. We just have to stay ready. And since we're in a monthly zone and we're very close to that bottom, right? It's best for us to just wait for confirmations, right? So if you're looking for sell opportunities, we still have to look for the sell confirmations, right? So let's say we were looking right here. Markets hitting that zone. It's in your sell zone. Well, how do I know it's going to sell when it's in a buy zone already? Well, let's drop down to lower time frame. And just check out the structure. So we can see here, we have liquidity being built up, right? We have higher high, higher low, consolidation throughout that whole high and low range. All of that. Now, we sweep liquidity. Now, we have a sweep. And then we change character here. Levels is letting me know, right? Levels is letting me know. Let's go up to the 15 minute real quick. So the starting point had some problems, but it looks like that was the move. If you're, again, starting point, um, shoulder. So starting point uh, was the opportunity again. So we can see with USD CAD or uh, USD JPY, um, starting points are are real are real big. After the change of character, right? So it doesn't take long, guys. When you start looking at charts and dissecting charts, to be like, well, USD whatever. After that change of character, it's retesting that starting point and it's gone. It's leaving that shoulder, right? So just know that. But this right here was pretty clean, um, and again, you're on the. 15 minute or the five minute, depending on what time frame. Um, if you're using a tight stop loss, obviously you got hit out. But again, if you're looking at the, the, the bigger picture, you can go ahead, put your stop loss at the high, because again, your stop loss, your dominant stop loss guys will always be the high. Yes, we all try to minimize, right? But at the end of the day, it'll always be the high. And we're on a lower time frame right now, right? Remember that. One to three, even though we have a wider stop loss than we would like, that still hits a one to three, right? So that's still fire, in my opinion. You know, that's that's cool with me, right? That's fine with me, hundred percent, right? There's also another thing that I like to do when it when it comes to this, guys, because I know, like, we shouldn't be missing opportunities just because we're scared of breaking retests or taking starting points when we see a shoulder up here, right? So there's two things that I like to do. Oh, there, there's mainly like one thing that I, I, I mainly like to fuck with, right? So I'll, I'll enter at the starting point that's down here. And instead of having my stop loss way up here, I'll put my stop loss at that right shoulder, right? And then if the market does want to go higher, well, then I will go ahead and exit my, my loss. I'll go ahead and take that loss like a boss. And I'll exit again at that right shoulder and just put my stop loss there. Right. And that goes for a break and retest. Let's say, you know what? I'm a break and retest trader. Okay, cool. Enter at that retest. My stop loss is right at that show, my uh, right shoulder. My next entry is at that right shoulder with my stop loss where it should be. Right. So when you see starting points right there where the break and retest is, bro, it's it's literally letting you know, hey, we we might break and retest right now, big dog. Right. So don't you don't always have to wait for this one trust me and that's why will I, I love how will puts his trades in ranges right he 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 literally sets it up like this he he's like yep this is it right here within this zone we can look for sales right within the zones we can look for sales so when the market comes all throughout in here we can look for sales all throughout in here right and shift it down this is also something that Oren used to do what the heck Oren used to do it too, right? So when he would see a setup, guys, what he would used to do is mark up this whole zone from high to low. And now that whole zone, this whole zone, just like Will does, that's your sell area with your stop loss at the high. So it doesn't matter where you get in, right? Pick and choose. doesn't matter. Where's the market when it's in there? Your stop loss is at the high, right? 
Now, there's another thing you can do with this as well, right? Because everybody's about minimizing risk, and I totally get that, right? You can enter at that break and retest area with your stop loss at the 50%. This is the other thing that I used to do a lot, like a lot, trust me. I would enter at that break and retest, stop loss at that 50. My next, my next entry was right at that 50% with my stop loss at the right shoulder. And then if the market went higher, I would just put my next entry right at that right shoulder with my stop loss. Right. So again, I as I'm doing this, you guys have to understand like you're doing this type of trading right here. I would not be taking 1% trades each trade. Like quarter of a percent, test trade them. Like, especially if you know you're going to be taking, you could possibly be taking two trade losses back to back. You possibly can, right? So you don't want to continue to enter 1%, one percent, another percent. And that's, now you're 2% down. So just keep that in mind, guys, right? Keep that in mind. This And this is just me trying to help you guys minimize risk. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, guys, the stop loss, the dominant stop loss will always be the high, no matter where you want to enter inside of this range, right? Don't be afraid of how big the stop loss is, guys. Some of the educators, like the thing that I trip out on too, and I had a clicking moment with this like my second year, is I would always try to find the tightest, tightest zone for the tightest stop losses, right? But a lot of the educators have pretty big stop losses. So why are you, the student who barely knows anything, who is learning, right, at the moment, they're trying to catch super, super tight trades like this when the actual professionals are looking more like this. Does that make sense, guys? All right. So don't be afraid to give yourself a little bit of a stop loss. Thank right? you. Yep. Give the market some room and just calculate your trade. No matter what, guys, calculate your trade. No matter what. Doesn't matter how big the stop loss is. Calculate that. Right, know what you're going to risk at the end of the day. If the market hits your stop loss, was it a fifty dollar risk, a ten dollar risk, two hundred, three hundred, a thousand? What was your risk? What was your percent you're willing to lose? Right, just so you guys know. Um, and 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 honestly, I do it like this. Like I'm telling you guys this just to simplify trading as much as possible. I feel like levels is already simplified with with starting points and shoulders, but we can always simplify it a little bit more. But at the end of the day, we have to understand how much we should be risking at that time. So just because we have three trades does not mean we should be entering three one percenters. Right, guys? Make sense? Just want to let that be known right there. Yes, sir. All right, Richard. What do you got for us, Richard? GU. Um, You guys can see that, right? Yes. This was actually pretty fire. Um, am I tripping? Where's this at? Annotate right here. Look at this right here. Look at that. Oh, change of character. We missed it. Oh, don't trip. We missed it. We came right back for another one, baby. Let's go. That's nice. So your entry is here. Your stop loss is here. Right? If you're entering right in this zone because of this structure on this side, your stop loss is here. We'll get a little bit of drawdown, but it looks like we're already at a one to two, if not a one to three. Like you should already be pretty out of this trade by the time we get this drop. So that's pretty clean. Or after, you know, we'll make once we get that drop. Um, but for cell number two, uh, you're looking for a second cell, right? Yeah. I'm looking for rejection in this area. I want to see if we can reject, but because USD JPY is still fairly bullish. We might be continuing up, but I, I do want to see if we can get this little change of character here. And once we get that, I'll enter at this section. I will not be entering first touch. Let me ex explain why. Um, So as we go back to levels real quick, let's go to GU. I do see what you're seeing, though. And I have it marked up on my chart as well, but I, I need to see things first. So just off of this, US, uh, G, uh, GU is freaking bullish right now, right? Fairly bullish right now, right? Fairly bullish right now, right? Fairly bullish right now, right? So knowing that, yes, I do see that crease inside of here, 
and we can possibly send it back down lower, right? Like that's definitely a possibility we should be considering, right? Especially when we're looking at this daily, we do see a break of structure. We do see a breakout rally and we do see a starting point in this area along with a head and shoulder down here, right? Lower low, lower high, lower low, massive change of character and we are doing its thing coming back down at the moment, right? So I would like to see the market come down lower. 100% would love to see the market come down in here so we can go ahead and look for some more buy opportunities and send it back up with its bullish momentum, right? I would like to see that. But as we drop down to a lower time frame real quick, just one time frame lower, we have a starting point in this area. We actually have two back to back. So we have a starting point here and then we had a starting point right here. And it doesn't look like it made it there, just missed it. Um, but this zone definitely held up and we actually changed character and this actually looks pretty pretty nice. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of favoring the buys just because we're still in bullish territory. Right, and that's fairly, fairly clean. We also have the same setup again. Breakout rally, right? Breakout rally with this uh, starting point right here in this section with the left shoulder. Right, we have left shoulder, neckline, head, change of character, right? So now I'm waiting for buys right here and I also have these cells marked up as well, right? I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and delete this for the visual. So now the market is in between two pretty decent looking zones, right? So what I would like to do first is see what zone gets touched. Right now it's consolidating. What zone is going to get touched first? Is, are we going to get a push up and get a reaction off of this sell zone and possibly come back down? Or are we going to go ahead and start trickling downward and touch my sell zone first and then come, I'm sorry, touch my buy zone first and then shoot back up? Right, you guys have to think in these possibilities. What could happen first? Right now, if we're bullish, right, market is bullish right now, and we're this buy setup looks pretty freaking good. I, I can't, I mean, it looks freaking fire. Um, if we get this buy setup first, I will definitely be looking to go ahead and continue with these buys. Right now. If we get to these sell zones first, I would be looking to take this sell. Now, why would I look to take this sell first and not second? Well, if the market is bullish, guys, think about it. If the market is bullish, we should just ride the trend, right? So if this is the next best buy opportunity, most likely there's a good possibility this could get clapped. I'm not saying... It can't hit, right? We can still get a rejection. Give me the next buy opportunity and continue up. But there's a possibility that this thing could just get ran through, right? So just keep, just a heads up. Now, if this gets hit first, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to, as soon as it touches this area right here, I'm going to drop down to that one minute, five minute setup. And I'm going to look for the exact same thing. Shoulder, head, change of character. Boom, and I'm going to try to catch it and ride that down in this area. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. That's what I want to see, right? That's what I want to see. But because we're continuing trend, if we can get this one first, there's a higher possibility of this one being clapped, right? Because we are in bullish territory right now, right? So just keep that in mind. And again, I can't, I'm not saying it can't, right? Because we can still consolidate, drop down, consolidate, right? Consolidation gives me that right shoulder. We change character. We get a rejection. We can still get some rejection off of that. But once it comes into this zone again, we might have to go ahead and look to exit these cells and start looking for more buy positions. Make sense, guys? Awesome. Um, let's see, let's see. Do you think we can have a good play on crypto this weekend? Possibly. Let's go ahead and take a look. Why do I call it an aggressive trade? Um, because we're not really looking for a setup. I know that was on USD CAD. Um, it's an aggressive trade, um, T, because 
we're not really looking for a setup um, once the market breaks and closes, right? This was the sell opportunity. Once it comes back inside, we're not really looking for another setup. We're kind of just selling with the naked eye per se, right? As soon as the market closes right here, we're selling without looking for a brand new setup. Does that make sense to you? Um, let's see. Kenny sending me some charts. What you got, Kenny? I need a link, my boy. Can you guys see this? In the picture, in the screen, or no? Oh, nah. I need a link, big dog. Nah. nah. Uh, what is this? GU? Can't see it. Oh, yeah. You're looking at the same thing I'm looking at, bro. Yeah, you're looking. Yeah, you're looking at this. You guys can see this, right? Oh, bro, I totally forgot about that right there, but that was pretty fire. And that's also why I was looking for buys. Oh, it's Eli. What's up, Eli? What's good, bro? That's also why I was looking for buys as well. Because if we go over here, this is a clean head and shoulder violation. Oh, yeah, it's this one. You can't really see it on this one, on this pair, though. Or on levels. Clean violation, bro. Boom, head and shoulder. Shoulder, head, change of character. I'm looking to take sales right back in this area when it comes back. I'm sorry. Yeah, when market comes back, I want to take sales. But look, we hit stop loss. Right? We hit stop loss. And now I would be looking to come and take buys when market comes back. Now, where are my starting points around that area? Right here. And right here. So now this whole zone, this whole area, I'm looking for buys. We don't, that's barely missed, bro. I got to think that's a missed opportunity, right? But now we're back in. We have a brand new setup. We can now continue to look for more buys. That's also why I'm looking for more buys. Thank you. I appreciate you, Kenny. That was a good example as well. I'm sorry, Eli. Shoot. Sorry, Eli. Appreciate you, bro. Um, Are you in that right now, Josue? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's nice, bro. Um, yeah, I am. For, for, are, are you at break even already? Um, it is, it is, it is, it is, but almost at break even, almost. So you went, you went over the weekend without moving your trade to break even, bro. Yes. Crazy work, big dog. Wow. Make sure that over the weekend, always, yeah. bro, always, because you don't know what when Sunday hits. Yeah. You don't know what could happen. So okay. even though it's super close to break even, yeah. On that weekend, bro, make yeah. sure you just it's about preserving capital, bro. Um, but this is fire. That's a clean setup. Right. I do see that. I was actually looking at that as well. Yeah. The only, okay. reason, the only reason why I didn't take it personally, yeah, is because I'm thinking this is consolidation. Oh, okay. Right. And what do we have right here? Shoulder. Yep. yep. Shoulder. Boom. Okay. So, yeah. This yeah, is the play. Character. I do see it. Shoulder, boom, head, change of character, right back to that shoulder, and we're in profit right now. You're yeah. in profit right now, big dog. Yeah. Right. That's right, Rich. Richie's in profit. Right. So I'm looking for sales in here. Okay. Just to say this buy can't work its way up. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that can happen. That is a possibility. Yeah. Exactly. Right. It's possible. Now, because we're bearish, right? Right. No, hey, Josue, Josue put in work, bro. He he deserves his flowers. I've been working with him for a minute. He puts in a lot of work on on his free time too, right? And because we're bearish, right? Dollars, yeah, pretty bearish. Mm -hmm. What we have here, Josue. This is why it's always safe. It's it's always good to preserve capital, especially over the weekend, right? And mm -hmm. and this also goes to right. A starting point can still get a rejection. Yeah. But look, we already have a break of structure. Yeah, All we need is true. that change of character, and now yeah. we're now we're continuing to look for sales. No, for sure, for sure. Right, so yes, sir. Keep that in mind. All right, yeah, absolutely. I will. So when Sunday opens, bro, go ahead and break even. If it hits right. your break even, yeah, yeah, it is what it is, dog. Exactly. We're, yeah, we're no, for sure. Within consolidation, anyways. Ah, uh, for sure. Let's just awesome, look for bro. something clear. Okay, absolutely. So good stuff, bro. That's that's great structure. I see what you're seeing. Yes, sir. Um, dang, this one right here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I got you, bro.
that right there, jacked up. That's messed up. But it comes and it barely misses that starting point too. That is jacked up. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. It was close. It was close, but all good. <laughs> Depending, yeah. I'm gonna try and make that line fit right here. <laughs> Dang, you could have got back in aggressive, dog. <laughs> Let's take a look real quick. You no way. <laughs> Where we gotta? I want to take a look at that real quick. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> I'm like, shit, low key. <laughs> oh, on levels, I'm not sure. That was the one hour time frame you sent him, but on levels, this was actually a hit. Mm, uh, mm, oh, uh, no, it was like the two hour. Okay, so the two-hour time frame? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I see that structure. Four-hour time frame? That's a smacker. So yeah. anytime you see two starting points like that, bro, back-to-back? -back, yeah. Whether it's the one one hour or four hour, you can see uh -huh. a, a couple possibilities. Just yeah. jump up a time frame and remove one, bro. Okay. And most of the time, that starting yeah. point's actually going to widen, and it's going to help you out. It's going to benefit you. So yes, you, you yes, would have been sir. able okay. to catch this right here. Yeah, okay. all good. All right, um, for sure. But fuck, this is looking good, dude. Yeah. yeah. This levels <laughs> is actually calling it out for you. It's literally telling you, yo, it's we a got hat. a break yeah. of structure. We got a change of character. The change of character, it's it's a little different. It's saying it right here. Mm. But okay. it is telling us this is the hit. Look at that. Yes, sir. So whenever it makes its way back up here, who knows when, but right. I'll be ready to take trades when the market comes back. Absolutely. Um, and, and it's yes, looking sir. pretty good consolidation wise as well. Everything is playing out the way it should. It's just a waiting game now. Um, does anybody have any questions? Thank you, man. Yeah, of course. Thank Appreciate you for sending in those charts, bro. Getting cleaner and cleaner. Love it, bro. Um, but any questions guys, before we end the night, I feel like we, we've been talking about charts for a minute, bro. What's up? Oh, like we had a, all day to talk about a chart. I feel like I only have like 10 minutes most calls. I'm all rushing through it and whatnot. But this was a cool call. I liked it. I think Fridays, we might have to just say, you know what? Straight market analysis. What what happened over the week? Um, Because I kind of like that. Um, But thanks for hopping on, guys. You know, send in your charts over the weekend. Make sure you guys are... I appreciate you, Chris. Make sure you guys are back testing and practicing what you guys are learning, right? You guys hop on these calls, not only to watch, but to learn gain some knowledge and information. I hope you guys are taking notes and I hope you guys are practicing over the weekend because reps are what's important. Reps are important, guys. Over the weekend, back testing, you can get as many trades in as possible. And you know, during the week, you're only going to trade probably less than 10 times. Most likely less than eight times, five times, depending on how disciplined and how many quality setups you're willing to take. So if you back test, 50 to 100 times, just imagine how confident you're going to be that following week, you know? So keep that in mind, guys. Um, but I will see you guys on Monday. Peace out, everybody.